Okay, so now let's see if we can go through the sim, each numbered item, and choose from the list the correct choice with regard to data analytics. In the previous video, we went through each item in the list, went over what it meant. So if you didn't watch part one, you probably should do that first and then come back and watch this video. So number one, fixing errors in data, identifying missing data, and flushing out useless information relates to which one of these from the list? And of course, the answer is data scrubbing or data cleaning. Fixing errors, flushing out useless information, identifying missing data. That process is referred to as data scrubbing or data cleaning. Number two, involves storing each data element as few times as necessary after useless information has been flushed out and errors have been fixed. And that would be data normalization. So first we clean the data, we scrub it, and then data normalization involves storing each data element as few times as necessary. Number three, ensures data are of high quality and well governed before they can be reliably analyzed. And that would be data management. Data management ensures that data are of high quality and well governed because if data is not of high quality, it cannot be reliably analyzed. Number four, involves the use of qualitative and quantitative methods and procedures to retrieve data from data sources and then inspecting the data to facilitate decision-making, often identifying opportunities for enhancement or advancement. And that's data analytics. Data analytics involves qualitative and quantitative methods and procedures to retrieve data from data sources and then inspecting the data based on data type to facilitate decision-making, often identifying opportunities for enhancement, for advancement. When it says procedures to retrieve data from data sources and then inspecting the data based on data type, Data type, we're talking about, is it structured data? Is it unstructured? Is it semi-structured? Because that's going to depend on how we retrieve and inspect the data. Number five, a key technology of big data that includes extracting customer information from emails and converting social media comments in order to gain new information. And the best answer here would be text mining a form of data mining, a key technology of big data, analyzes text from the web, often from comments made in forums or text from customer emails and other text-based sources through the use of machine learning in order to identify new information or new topics. A popular use of text mining is to use the text from online reviews written by customers. Number six, Information that is not organized in a predefined manner, such as text from financial statement footnotes. All right, so here they're talking about unstructured data because it says that it's not organized in a predefined manner, such as text from financial statement footnotes. Footnotes to financial statements are text-based and they're not typically organized in a predefined manner the way the balance sheet is See, if it mentioned the balance sheet, then you would say that it was more structured, but this would be unstructured data. Unstructured data, if you remember, more difficult for computer programs to analyze, they're maintained by non-relational databases known as NoSQL. Number seven, data with a high level of organization, such as a balance sheet, that would be structured data. High level of organization. A balance sheet is structured. It's got assets, liabilities, and equity, further organized with current and non-current sections for the assets and liabilities. And what do we know about structured data? Well, structured data file types are generally maintained by SQL, which is used for managing relational databases and performing various operations on the data in the database. So if it's structured data, it goes with SQL, relational database. If it's unstructured data, then it's non-relational databases and no SQL. So we're not memorizing, not memorization, but association. And we want to associate structured data with 
relational databases, and SQL. And we want to associate unstructured data with non-relational databases and no SQL. Number eight, one of the four V's of big data. The more data a business has on its customers, both recent and historical, the more valuable the insights. And the answer is volume-based value. One of the four V's, volume-based value, comes from the extreme amount of data captured over time. And the goal of volume-based value is for a business to obtain more data on their customers, both recent and historical, for even greater insights. Number nine, one of the four V's of big data involving rapid analysis capabilities in order to provide businesses with the right decision in time to achieve their customer relationship management objectives. And the key word here is rapid analysis capabilities. We're talking about speed. It must be velocity-based value. One of the four V's, velocity-based values based on speed, involves rapid analysis capabilities because businesses need the information in time to achieve their goals. Number 10, one of the four V's of big data that requires data to be relevant and reliable in order to be trustworthy. And of course, that's veracity-based value. One of the four V's, veracity-based value, refers to the trustworthiness of the data. If the data is relevant and reliable, then it's trustworthy. Number 11, large amounts of data collected from various sources, structured or unstructured, including social media, devices hooked up to the internet, and videos, and that's big data. Big data includes the large amount of data collected from such sources as social media, data from internet-enabled devices, videos, voice recordings. This data may be structured or unstructured, maybe semi-structured, big data. Number 12, the National Weather Service integrates multiple data and knowledge to better represent the weather in a more useful and accurate depiction compared to the individual sources. And that's data fusion. Data fusion is the process of integrating data and knowledge representing the same real world object, in this case the weather, in a more consistent, accurate, and useful representation than the individual sources of data. Number 13, a customer on a travel website selects an airline ticket to purchase and prepares to finalize the online transaction. The web page then displays hotel and car rental suggestions that customers often purchase with the airline ticket. And that's an example of predictive analytics. Predictive analytics answers the question, what is likely to occur? A common use of predictive analytics occurs when a customer selects an item to purchase online, prepares to finalize the transaction, and the web page displays additional products that other customers purchased at the same time or just after the initial purchase. Number 14, deviation from expected results can be identified by which application of data analytics? Think you know the answer? Leave a message in the comments section. Then go to cpaexamtutoring.com, home of the I-75 CPA review course, and get on the right road to passing the CPA exam.